Okay, it's Saturday morning, and I'm on my third cup of coffee thinking about content for this month's Moment of Clarity video. NPR is on the radio, and a gentleman named Clay Johnson, author of The Information Diet, says in his interview, who wants to be informed when they can be affirmed? The comment came in the middle of a piece about the similarities of eating food and consuming information on the internet, mostly. Wow, did Johnson nail it. We find new data risky, especially if it doesn't affirm our already entrenched knower judger beliefs. Republicans eat up the right-wing rhetoric and fist-pump efforts to protect the wealthiest 1%. Democrats rally around printing more money and finding new ways to distribute it. Okay, I simplified it, but you get the point. In today's political environment, our candidates apparently don't believe that we information consumers are open to new data. Both sides of our political spectrum are absolutely certain they are right and the other side is wrong. And those positions form the bulk of the advertising available. The millions of dollars spent promoting the candidates are focused on affirming the voter's knower-judger, not informing the voter's learner-researcher. Over and over again, we go to the polls and vote for the candidate who most affirms our current set of beliefs. We hardly ever open ourselves to new information that might challenge our knower-judger concepts. It's easier to feel warm and fuzzy in the candidate's affirmation of our existing right and wrong positions. Now, Johnson worked on the Howard Dean campaign back in 2004, and he reports that they were entrenched in their knower-judger belief that even after the screaming incident, Dean was the clear choice for the Democratic Party. That's what made me start thinking, Johnson said. There's something going on here with our rhetoric, and there's something going on here with our media diets, where even the most highly informed of us can be ignorant. That's not much different than how we handle most of our conversations and interactions, actually. We traditionally stay in our knower-judger and feel comfortable when the other side yields and, and agrees with us. We've prevailed, after all. But what if the other guy had different data? What if he had different information than you? Could you get into your learner-researcher long enough to see it? If it was substantially different than yours, could you change your knower-judger position? Data and information are not the enemy. That's tough to acknowledge when they compete with our understanding of the rules of life. This is exactly the situation I describe when I say knowledge impedes learning. Now, if you value learning, then I suggest you recognize when your influence is being seduced by a message that affirms your knowledge and go seek more information. I'm Kim DeMott, Corporate Co-Driver, and this is another moment of clarity.